Today's objective is the surface area of prisms and cylinders. Prisms and cylinders are similar because they both have two bases that are congruent. Remember, the base is what the shape is sitting on. So in the this, in this prism, what's on the bottom and what's on the top are the side. That's the base. Of course, I could turn it and have it be a different direction, and then that shape would be the base. But whatever is on the bottom, the same shape is on the top. And in a cylinder, it's if you put it on the side, it would roll. So bottom and top, you can flip it upside down, and it is similar. So it has the same area. The surface area is the area of on the outside of the shape. It's wrapping if you unwrapped it. And if you unwrap it or unfold the prism or cylinder, the shape is called a net, okay? So here is a prism, like let's say it's a cereal box or something, and in a prism you have three sets of rectangles that are congruent. You have the top and bottom, which would be 4 by 8, so the area would be 32 meters squared each, so you'd have to times it for 2 to get both of them. You have the front and the back, here's the front and the back, which is 4 by 12, you see that? So the area would be 48 meters squared each, so you would times it by 2 for both of them. And then you have the left side and the right side, which would be the 8 by 12, I'm sorry I underlined it and I kind of took out some of the words, the letters a little bit, which is 96 meters squared for each of them, so you would times it by 2 to get it both, okay? So here is, I unfolded this and wrote in it, so it kind of looks messy, but here is the net, okay? This would be the front side, here's the right side, there's the back side, there's the left side, and then the top and bottom, I folded those down, okay? And here are the numbers that go with it. Four, eight along this side, four again, eight along the other side, this is the 12 height, Okay, and then the top, that's four up there, because that's four, and then the bottom, eight along here. Okay, did you see that? All right, to find the surface area, we can do two methods. The first one, which is the easiest one initially, but then when the other one makes sense, it becomes easier. So do which one works for you the best, okay? We find the surface area of the front, the top, the side, add them together, and then double it, because we have to take into account the back, the bottom, and the other side. So we, the formula would be surface area equals 2 times the area of the front, the area of the top, the area of the side, or 2 times 32, 48, and 96, 2 times 176, 76, which is 352 meters squared. Okay. Now notice the net is a large rectangle and made of the front, the right side, the back, the left side, and then two smaller rectangles, which were the top and the bottom, the base it was sitting on. Okay? The larger rectangle length, which is the side, the front, the side, and the back, this is also the perimeter of the base. Okay, that's what's interesting about this. Think if I wrap this back around it, the base, these side measurements, 4, 8, 4, 8, that's this measurement right here, 4, 8, 4, 8, okay? So now we're on way 2 to find the surface area. All right, I drew them again. So remember to find the area of each of the individual sides, we use the formula area equals base times height with a lowercase b. An uppercase B means the area of the base. Okay, uppercase B is not the same as the lowercase B. Uppercase B equals the area equals base times height. You need to do something to get the uppercase B. Okay, it's not just a number on the prism. So I wouldn't say, oh, the base measurement, you know, like if, if this was just an individual rectangle, we would say base times height, 8 and 12. Okay, to find the area of the base, it would be 8 times 12, 96. So let's look at this. Remember, if you this is this length of this large rectangle is the same as the perimeter of the base. Because if here's our base that it's sitting on, when you look at it like that, there's the base, 4 by 8 by 4 by 8, 
if that was just the perimeter of the base it was sitting on. So, the surface area can also be found by finding the area of the base times 2, because there's the top and the bottom, add that to the perimeter of the base times the height of the prism, prism because that's what the large rectangle is. So here it is written, and I drew a prism next to it, so you know that's what we're finding. Surface area equals 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height. And that's how you need to say it to me. You cannot say 2B plus PH. You have to say 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height of the object, actually, times the height of the object, or the height of the prism. So filling in that information, 2 times the area of the base would be 4 times 8, plus the perimeter of the base, 4 plus 8 plus 4 plus 8, you can write it out like this or you can do it in your head, times the height of the prism, which is 12. 2 times 32 plus 24 times 12, 64 plus 288 equals 352 meters squared, the same thing. We got adding up, doing, finding the individual area of each of the three different sizes and then times it by two. All right. That's enough for prisms. Now let's do our cylinders. Here's our cylinder. I'm telling you it's 8 inches high and the radius is 3. So if the radius is 3, the diameter is 6. You should always write this down. And if I unfold it and make a net, I still have my circle base, top and bottom. But when you cut a circular shape and unfold it, it becomes a rectangle. Okay? It's actually called the lateral area. I want to draw this in for you. This is called the lateral area. Okay, that's what the unfolded cylinder is called once it's flat. All right, so we're going to use the second formula that we did because it's this, this it's, see you have a circle, so you have to find the area of that base, the area of that base, and then the area of this which is if we have a circle and we unfolded it, the bottom part, that's the circumference times the height. So the area of the base is pi r squared, the area of this base is pi r squared, and the circumference is pi d, and then the height. So here's our formula. Surface area of a cylinder is still 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height of the cylinder. It's the same formula except the perimeter of the base is really the circumference. But you don't need to say C, you can just, it's the same thing. Okay, so here we go. Surface area equals two times the area of this base is gonna be pi r squared, plus the perimeter of this base is going to be pi d times the height of the object. So let's fill in what we know. Two times pi times the radius is three squared, plus pi times, um, the diameter, so if that's 3, 6, times the height of the object. 3 times 3 is 9, times 2 is 18, so 18 pi, 6 times 8 is 48, plus 48 pi. Add those together, we get 66 pi inches squared. Okay, sometimes you are asked to leave your answer in terms of pi, and this is easier because we don't have to multiply it by 3.14, and it's more accurate because we didn't just estimate pi to be 3.14. But if you do need to work it out, you would do 66 times 3.14 equals 207.24 inches squared, or 207 and 24 hundredths inches squared. And I always want you to round to the hundredths because that's what we've estimated pi to, rounded pi to be. Please always do it in terms of pi first, and then if you have to do the last step, do the last step. Don't start multiplying by 3.14 in the middle. That's it.